Hello and welcome to Bottom Line. Tonight, viewers, we shall discuss two issues. First, the Naga issue with the NSC and I am releasing a fresh statement yesterday saying the problem, the problem cannot be left to be solved by time. Again, the second issue we shall discuss tonight is that of the inner line permit row in Meghalaya with the proposed visit of Union Home Minister Amit Shah scheduled this weekend, pressure groups in the state are expected to increase the activity to draw the HM's attention, the Union, Ho Union Home Minister's attention to the demand. Uh, but first, first viewers to the Naga issue. Well, the NSC and IM continues to maintain its stand on the issue of uh, a separate flag and a constitution, a separate constitution. In a fresh statement released yesterday, the NSC and IM, without mincing words once again, stated that the Nagas are not asking for a flag and constitution as they already have one. The NSC and IM reiterated that the Nagas are sovereign people and freedom and sovereignty are inherent rights of people and nations. Significantly, the NSNIM once again said that any solution has to be based on the framework agreement, even as it said that the problem cannot be left to be solved by time or left to be exploded. The lines of the fresh statement does, the, these are the lines, cannot be left to be solved by time or cannot be left to be exploded. Does this hint at a stalemate of sorts at the moment? This is the big question we are asking uh, tonight and to discuss the matter, I am being joined by Mr. Elwin Dang, General Secretary of the Naga Ho Ho from Kohima. Thank you Mr. Indang for joining us on Bottom Line. Joining me from, from Shillong, uh, Professor Xavier Mao of uh, Nehu. Dr. Xavier Mao has been very closely following the Naga issue for years now. Also joining me from Shillong is Dr. Prasenjit Biswas, also Professor Nehu. Both of them have been uh, closely following the Naga issue for years now and 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 have been have been uh, noticing every little development to the issue. If I can go to Mr. Ilu Indang in Kohima first. Mr. Indang, well, uh, the NSC and I has been consistently releasing a statement after the other every week, every 10 days. And it's almost, uh, if I may say, uh, the, the, the content, the content, the stress has been on the same point uh, that uh, a solution cannot be forced. Solution cannot be forced. It's kind of, uh, if you say also, it's 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 getting repetitive. But I don't want to term it repetitive uh, because it's stressing on the same point, highlighting that this is the demand. This cannot change. So does that hint at a stalemate of sorts at the moment, uh, Mr. Ndang? Yes, uh, it's long overdue. The after the signing of the framework agreement in 2015, there has been assurances after assurances from the government of India. We have had enough discussions in the channel. People have been waiting against hope year after year. Now we have entered into another new year, 2021. Uh, you see, it is rather unfortunate for delaying the process, but repeatedly I have stated uh, recently in the channel, we never lost hope as long as it is to benefit the people, as long as a lost, lasting solution is brought about. I think the people have all hope and confidence on the maturity of the government of India. The, the statements that has been issued from time to time for delaying the process, this is equally concerning the people. Equally concerning, yes. Uh, Professor Mao, well, uh, 
2019, we were told the talks officially ended, Professor Mao, and uh, it's, it's 2021 now. It's 2021 now. And again, uh, the way things look like at the moment, I mean, uh, we, have, we haven't had uh, much of a communication uh, from the government side, but as far as NSA and IM is concerned, repeated statements, the way things look at the moment, it, it again uh, looks like a, 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 a stalemate of sorts. Does that concern you? Well, definitely it does concern me since it is just lingering on and on. Therefore, I feel that both the negotiating parties should have a very serious uh, rethinking and try to change from their fixed standpoint and come to the position of a give and take a sort of compromise position that is win-win situation for both. And in practical terms, I think the separate flag may be flown along with the Indian national flag and the constitution perhaps NSCN IM can give up. And in place of that, Article 371A may be strengthened. And then the NSCN IM should also give up the ancestral land of all the Naga inhabited areas except Naga dominated areas so that the other dominated areas like the Zomi people or the Kuki people, they should be also given the democratic freedom to have their own autonomy. And likewise, the Manipuris, the Maite should be also given, I think, their autonomy. So that way, I think uh, that will satisfy everyone, but everybody should have some kind of consideration for the other community with respect for the other community and give up if there is any unusual disadvantage or or a sort of a complete uh, advantage or interest to one's own community, I think that has to be given up for the balanced, harmonious interests of all the communities. Though I know it is uh, very, very difficult for the government of India at present, uh, in a way guided by the RSS and the BJP, uh that one Hindu, one Hindi, one Hindustan, and Akanda, Akanda doctrine to have no, but, but Professor Mao, Professor Mao we also have to give it to the country. BJP. Yeah. We also have to yes. give it to the BJP to have brought this issue so far. I mean, uh, uh, despite yeah. uh, whatever you call the idea of Akanda Bharat, uh, na, maybe, uh, well, uh, it's, it's again unity and diversity uh, that also have to keep in mind, and I'm sure the BJP government is aware of that. But, uh, well, uh, 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 Elwindang, Elwindang, a very good suggestion there. In fact, a very good observation there. Maybe it's time for uh, both the, 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 the negotiating parties, the negotiating parties to reconsider uh, probably and, and, and maybe, maybe somebody has to compromise on something. Uh, in this case, as uh, Professor Mao just mentioned, maybe uh, the issue of flag can be resolved in a certain way and, and maybe the demand for constitution uh, for now uh, can be, can be, uh, kept for a later time or can be, uh, in, 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 in this case, as you mentioned, can be given up for now. But somebody has to take the first step, isn't it? Somebody has to compromise on something or somebody has to say, okay, let's work out and let's uh, ensure it happens. Because even the NSC and I am in the latest statement has, has admitted that missing this second chance, missing this chance to get in a solution would, would, would really prove too costly for everyone. Yes. You see, Nagas have come very, very close to the government of India. All the contentious, contentious issues have been discussed, and we are informed that they have resolved the contentious issues. Now, to come to a landing situation 
we are at the laws what has been delaying the government of India. Yes, flag and constitution is what are the two issues that have been raised uh, very recently. But having realized and having understood the Nagas movement, Naga, Nagas have every right to protect, to preserve, to hold on to its own flag and constitution which is so dear to them. Now without these two issues being recognized by the government of India, there, we don't see any political settlement in it. There is no resolution to it. So if at all, and if the government of India is serious enough to resolve this issue, then government of India should be, uh, should show its maturity by acknowledging it and recognizing the flag and constitution of the Naga people. Recognizing the flag and constitution of the Naga people. Dr. Prasanjit Biswas, uh, well, uh, we have been taking the opening remarks from our panelists. Uh, uh, the NSCNIM has been coming up with one statement after the other. And, of course, it has maintained its stand over the issue of separate flag and constitution. It has also spoke about uh, sovereignty as a right of the Naga people, but also admitted that it is welcome to, 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 to solution through a peaceful dialogue and also admitted that, yes, this opportunity uh, to find a solution cannot be missed. But despite all this, uh, do you see a stalemate at the moment uh, currently uh, where the talks may not be really heading anywhere for now? Is it a way and watch game being played. Uh, what is your assessment? Yeah, at one level, you are right that it's a wait and watch game, and uh, everyone is trying to measure the response that is possible from the other side. By throwing off the head in the ring, it is looking for a kind of response or reaction from the other side. But this mode of negotiation itself is not a very correct kind of a dialogic uh, mode, of mode of negotiation. Therefore, what needs to be resolved here is what are the problems that one is facing by a set of proposals. For example, the proposal about integrating Naga inhabited areas uh, is what are the problems that are related to that kind of a proposal. Or the proposal of having a constitution for the Nagas, what are the uh, problems associated with that kind of proposals. So if these problems are enumerated properly by a working group comprising of members from both the sides, all the parties involved in the talk, it will be possible to arrive at the consensual ground. So what I'm finding is that there is no systematic understanding of the problem. The way professionally political scientists experts in peace negotiations would understand the problem in the same way the problem is not understood. It is very, it is left to the actors only. Actors only can never arrive at a, at a reasonable solution. To arrive at a reasonable solution, you need an expert group to work out the problems that are faced by but, but all even the that expert group, and how these problems can But be. even that expert group would have to be from among the actors, isn't it? Quote, unquote, <coughs> actors. Yes, partly, partly from the actors, but there should be some other independent, neutral, expert, peacemaking experts, those who have professional knowledge in peacemaking. They can really find out the ways and means to converging the differences and uh, to work out through the problems what could be a constitutional solution. So that kind of working out needs to be worked out now. Uh, Mr. Elwindang, Elwindang uh, Dr. Prasanjit Biswas here suggests that maybe a working group can be formed, a working group can be formed where from among the stakeholders and beyond, uh, uh, a, a, a committee can be formed to take the negotiations to, to discuss these issues. Do you think that's even practical? We've been talking for the last uh, so many years, we've been talking for over two decades now, uh, Elwindang. Do you think uh, forming uh, such a committee again, uh, wouldn't it mean uh, restarting things again in a way. Do you think that's practical or we can do better maybe from the current situation? See, if the government of India is serious in resolving the issue, I think uh, there are various ways and means of resolving it. 
as uh, suggested by one of the panelists. There can be a committee, select committee, which can sincerely work on this, which will benefit both the government of India and the Naga people. Government of India should pave way to study on this. So the the select committee that we are talking about, that we are talking about, uh, obviously they will be from among the stakeholders. You want the Naga civil society, the scholars, academicians to be a part of it. Is that what you are suggesting? From a cross section, experts can come in, can draw, can come together and work on it, which can be acceptable to the people. Professor Xavier Mao, do you think that's practical at this moment when we have been talking for quite a long time and we, have, we, are, we, are, we are already saying that officially the talks have ended? Do you think uh, making a select committee starting all over, it, it, would it be like starting all over again? Well, I do not think that it is uh, starting all over again. Okay. Rather, it is a kind of uh, assistance given to the negotiating parties, given pros and cons, and the various dimensions and the various compulsions of the present day contemporary situation. And I think if that can enlighten or that can give both the negotiating parties with intellectual and the democratic liberal forces, which will be good for both the parties, I think that can be welcome. Because sometimes rigid stand is taken because of certain ignorance, because of certain things which one party is not aware. Therefore, if uh, serious meaning people, without any bias, without any prejudices, if they have the genuine concern, I think their help and their assistance are most welcome. And I think that can help smoothen the negotiation and that can lead to a conclusion, I feel. But again, again, Professor Xavier Mao, when you talk about a select committee and you uh, talk about taking, uh, well, uh, trying yeah. to solve the issue by making another committee, uh, when we talk about the solution, when you talk about solution, yes, flag and constitution are a part of it. Also part of it is the issue of, uh, of, uh, of uniting the Naga contiguous areas and also the rights of Nagas who, who, who live beyond the territory of, of present day Nagaland. So when you are talking about forming a select committee, don't you think uh, it, is, it, 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 it may also be apt to involve stakeholders from those areas as well so that, so that again, a situation doesn't arise where we may need to form another committee to solve those issues? Well, I think if uh, the absolute Naga majority areas are to be integrated, there is no objection from other communities. The objection is only when the other community dominated areas are to be integrated, then of course it is democratically not proper because their democratic freedom should be respected. So I think that is not a problem at all if Nagas also agree that let the uh, minority Naga areas should be merged or remain as they are with Manipur or with Arunachal or with Assam, but the absolute majority areas, if merged or integrated or unified with Nagaland state, I don't think there is uh, much of a problem. But the demand for all the ancestral land where other communities are also residing, I think that will be against the international law and against the democratic uh, liberal ideas of uh, respecting other communities. The diversity and the otherness have to be respected and pluralism has to be promoted. Dr. Biswas, uh, do you think if, 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 say, for instance, such a committee is made, 
uh, Dr. Biswas. Uh, probably, uh, if, 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 if we look within Nagaland, probably it will be more practical to make a flag and constitution specific committee because when we talk about integration of Naga contiguous areas, of course, uh, we cannot ignore stakeholders uh, from, from, from Manipur, most importantly, and uh, that will widen the ambit and maybe make things a bit more complex and lingering. So, uh, w w would a flag and constitution specific committee be a more practical one because that that seems to be the biggest issue as of now uh, uh, because other things are being simultaneously taken care of as we are being made to understand isn't it uh, still integration remains an unresolved issue in the top therefore along with integration the question of having a constitutional setup by which all the Nagas could be integrated and then a separate flag could also be granted to them as a marker of their distinct identity are all interrelated. They are intertwined. One issue leads to the other issue. Therefore, one has to have a comprehensive, holistic understanding of the each of the problem and how they are connected and they are leading to another round of problems. So the problem areas are not properly identified as yet and which can be identified by an expert study group in collaboration with the actors and the stakeholders. So therefore, the idea of talk needs to be a little more broadened. Otherwise, talks have been left at a dead end and they haven't really ended. So therefore, we have to take off from the point from where we have ended and we have to address these issues that are cropping up in the process of finding out or working out a concrete solution. Mr. Elwindang, uh, well, uh, one point that you have made in the beginning of the show is that despite, despite the so-called ongoing stalemate, uh, you and many others like you, uh, even stakeholders, are still hopeful that a solution would come soon. Uh, from, from, from which corner do you see that coming and, and, and what could bring about a turning point? Of course, you have reiterated that the government of India uh, needs uh, to, 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 to recognize and respect uh, certain aspects. Uh, but uh, it has remained such, things have remained such, if I may say, since October 2019. So, is there hopelessness sinking in or, or do you think there are, of course, a uh, lot of things, a lot of developments have taken place, renewed conversations, uh, renewed dialogues, talks have taken place in New, in, in New Delhi in the last few months, uh, other actors have, have joined in and things are moving. Uh, but again, uh, the NSC and IM seems to be a bit worried and obviously concerned and worried and that is... Uh, uh, seen in the repeated uh, statements that it is releasing uh, time and again. So, what is it that can give hope right now for turnaround? Well, uh, the talks at the moment is, it has slowed down. It has slowed down. The pace has really slowed down. But we are also closely following. We are also assured that the uh, government of India, the officials have assured us that whatever is possible, that will be worked out. They have requested us to have patience and that is the reason why we are hopeful and that is the reason why we look forward that something good beneficial for the people will be arrived at. Something beneficial for the people would be arrived at. Uh, Professor Mao, uh, do you think also somewhere down the line the NNPG factor, the NNPG factor, NNPG's factor may be worrying uh, the NSC and I am a bit at this moment. Well, I don't think so. Even the NNPGs, they are very much uh, happy if a uh, separate flag is uh, given. And if uh, integration of Naga area is given, they are also very much happy. But in their perception, the government of India may not concede to this, and including separate constitution. They are not opposed to this. And even the Naga public, 
is very much in favor of this. And I strongly feel the government of India has uh, gone down from the prime minister level to the group of ministers level, from the governor, uh, Soros Kaushal, to the bureaucrats. So it has gone down, and I think the government of India is not conceding much. So that way, on the part of the government of India, face-saving device for the NSC and IM is not there. And after all, they had opposed, even in the past, the Shillong Accord and even the 16-point agreement, and in which so many people were killed. So this sort of for historical circumstances, I think the government of India should also take into account as a part of a face-saving device, psychological and even political consideration, how they will respond to the fellow Nagas and the Naga public. So that, I think, on, in my thinking, the government of India is ignoring this dimension. And if the liberal democratic forces is uh, powerful in India, I don't think there is any problem for this. It is even good for India for uh, greater democratic forces to prevail in India. It would be good for India to emerge even as a world power instead of having so many forces, this gruntal, resentful kind of forces in different parts of the country. The true pluralism, the true multiplicity, the true diversity should be promoted and that will not weaken India. On the contrary, that will strengthen modern, contemporary, strong world power. This is my view. That's very well put. Uh, Mr. Elwindang, we're running out of time. There's something I ask you uh, over and over again. Uh, what, according to you, is the way forward from here, should be the way forward from here? And what is the aspiration? What is the aspiration of the common Naga people at this juncture? You see, there is no problem that cannot be resolved. The problem, these problems are all man-made and therefore humanly it can be resolved provided the negotiating parties, particularly the government of India, is serious enough to resolve this matter, taking into account the sufferings of the Naga people for such a long years. No problem. There's no problem that cannot be resolved. Uh, hopeful statement there. Uh, Dr. Biswas, uh, parting remarks. Yeah, I think that a working group must study the problem in totality. Part of the problem that is not yet addressed needs to be addressed in a faster manner. And the problem includes integrating Naga-dominated areas in one constitutional framework without altering the boundaries of the existing states how that problem could be resolved requires the best of the brains and minds to be put together so that a problem, this solution can be worked out on that. That is the most important issue. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Well, we hope sooner than later a, a, a breakthrough comes uh, over again. Uh, on that note, we have to go for a very short break. On the other side, we'll discuss the ILP issue uh, in Meghalaya, of course. Expectations are high as Union Home Minister Amit Shah is slated, is slated to visit the state uh, uh, this Saturday. Very short break here.